You seem to still be up there somewhere. Maybe I am. There are flying saucers. Supposing there are Martians or something in there. guys welcome back to another weird wednesday i'm ashers and this is tobias tobias how was your weekend i had a great weekend i was in humble van meter iowa for the van meter visitor festival and i got to hang out with all kinds of cool people and friends of mine that i had never met in real life before and uh, it was just a really, really great experience. And it was, um, it's kind of the, boy, almost the exact opposite of my experience at, at Mothman Festival. Now, Mothman Festival is a lot of fun. You know, nobody grabbed their fucking pitchforks and torches or anything. <laughs> but it was a lot. And the Van Meter Visitor Festival, on the other hand, is very speaker focused. It's it's less of the festival atmosphere, you know. It's not a bunch of like Gen Z folk in cosplay or anything. Right. Again, nothing wrong with that, guys. It's okay, you know. Nobody's saying it's not. I'm just saying this is a different different experience. Uh, it's kind of more my speed in that it is more focused on the uh, phenomena and the the speakers presenting various phenomena um and uh and and stuff like that so i i really really enjoyed it i got to hang out with um chad lewis and david weatherly and that's always a great time steve berg was there nash hoover was there uh boy all kinds of folks I, that i know i'm forgetting and that bugs the crap out of me but i will totally think of it um but uh yeah so everything about it was uh oh the guys from creepy acres were there oh yeah yes that was super fun yeah sean and chad uh great guys uh that was super fun to hang out with them as well because i gotta tell you if you've never hung out with them uh they're a lot of fun to hang out with they're excellent conversationalists very like very sharp wits so tons of fun uh but yeah there's a there's a lot of a lot of really entertaining people. A lot of my friends, again, that I just hadn't been able to see in a while or in some cases had never been able to see in real life. And uh, it's just kind of the relaxing research trip that I needed to recover from the uh, the Mothman Festival. Because, again, this was this was further research for the, the Mothman book that uh, that Richard and I are working on. So we wanted to uh, to include other sort of you know, regional winged humanoid or winged creature sightings. I mean, whether or not you consider the the Van Meter visitor a winged humanoid is up for de- uh, debate, probably, because nobody can seem to agree exactly what it, it's supposed to look like. So who knows? But, uh, but yeah, that no, was absolutely great. So how was your weekend? Oh, Jesus. Not as great. It was not as great. It wasn't as bad, but it wasn't as great. Um, we had a uh, hurricane in Ohio. It was great. Hurricane Helene um, with her tropical t- depression, <laughs> um, which if I make one more joke about that, I think my daughter, my daughter is going to throttle me. Um, <laughs> so I won't. But anyway, so we got hit with basically hurricane level winds, um, which knocked out the power to it doesn't matter how many people, too many pe- people. Um, I was one of them. It was great. Um, so I got to have a, a 24 hour uh, power outage, which was a lot of fun. And uh, sounds like fun. It was so much fun. Um, I still have to um, restock my fridge, you know, things like that. Uh, it was it was it was great. So the whole weekend was very up in the air because it was kind of this weird, like uncertainty. Right. It, it was a very strange liminal space. And I'm not going to complain that much um, because Hurricane Helene has been fucking ferocious on other parts of the country and it is absolutely devastating. And if you, listener, can help those people in any way, um, you you absolutely should. Um, 
whether that be sharing social media posts with resources for people or making donations to local organizations. That's awesome. Um, but what, what I saw happen in my community, my local community here, is that in, in the face of um, devastation, um, people really came together. And that was really amazing. Um, we had a lot of like local businesses that were doing free meals or just, you know, opening up their businesses with power for people to just charge their phones or um, local restaurants, you know, letting people come in and fill up their coolers with ice or, you know, just like, like I said, just a lot of community was involved. And that was um, a stark contrast to everything that had happened. And uh, that that was really great. Um, you know, of course, I had my own silly set of circumstances um, involved with everything, you know, because I didn't have power. I didn't spend a lot of time at home. I spent a lot of time in my car while driving around after storm devastation is, is not a great idea um, because I ended up having um, tire issues. <laughs> ah, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Which have been resolved. Um, you know, that was not uh, fun. Um and different things like that. But, you know, I we ended up getting the power back on Saturday. Um, we kind of just stayed around with uncertainty because we kind of had rolling power outages. And even today, we're still not. I mean, that's still happening. <laughs> so if it goes out, um, I have a mini panic attack um, because I did go to the grocery Saturday night. And uh, <laughs> like, oh, my God. Um, but, you know, it's okay. So Sunday, um, I went and saw a movie. With my kid and uh we went and saw uh the wild robots which you know it going and seeing a movie was like my goal for the weekend because i just needed to get the fuck away from everything that was going on um and the movie theaters all have power so <laughs> nice. um, but you know it was a it was a great opportunity you know for for what it's worth for people that don't go to the movie and i do go to the movies we talk obviously we talk about movies on the show um for people that that don't go to the movies man if you are having a time let me tell you that's the perfect time to go to the movies because you 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 know, you're forced to get away from your home. You're forced to get away from your problems and just go sit and focus on something else for a set amount of time. And it will fucking recharge your mood instantly. You know, it's, it's a great way to do that. And then, you know, once you, once you come back, you kind of feel a little more refreshed. You feel a little more like you can handle your situation, um, which is how I felt after I saw The Wild Robot. And let me tell you, The Wild Robot was a great movie. It was fucking fantastic. You know, yes, it's a kid's movie. Um kind of interesting contrast because it shows a lot of animals being killed like a lot of them I and mean, it's about a robot that gets stuck on a, you know basically a deserted island it's not deserted it's filled with animals um and it um integrates into the society there but you know one of the main themes of it is how um cruel uh they kind of all are to each other and i mean when i say like animal killings i mean at one point an animal comes and like chomps a bird and the bird's head flies off its body and the robot catches the severed head in its hand <laughs> like, all right hardcore for a kid's film <laughs> that's what kids movies used to be like though you know, like Bambi's mom dies in like the first 10 minutes of that yeah, movie. Right. Devastating. Yeah. You, know, you don't see that anymore. It was just, it was, it was fine, but it was surprising. Yeah. My kid's fine. You know, she enjoyed it. Um, sure. But she's it seen was, worse. Yeah, right, exactly. You know, and it was just, it was really shocking. <laughs> I was like, okay, but very good movie. Good, it's good for everybody. Go see it. Uh, especially again, if you're in a space, man, go see a kid's movie. It's fine. You can be an adult watching a kid's film. People don't care. Nobody cares. What are they doing? They're supposed to be there watching the movie, not paying attention to you, you know? Um, but uh yeah, that was pretty much that was pretty much it. And I just really haven't done much else. Um, and this has been my first day of normalcy. So um thank God for the podcast. You know, we almost didn't didn't record this week for one because of no power, but you know, you had asked me, hey, are we gonna and I thought about it. I thought about not recording. Um, but I, nobody would have blamed you under the circumstances. You know, I just felt like I needed it. So I, sure. yeah, I thought that it, you know, it would help to keep a routine and, and it has. So I'm glad that we are here doing the thing. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm glad we're here too. You know, so that was, uh, that was my weekend. Um, with that being said, I don't really, ha I don't have any news, um, because I was doing other stuff. Um, sure. I have a news. Oh, go well, ahead. I wanted to, you know, I'll, I'll use my news time to um, 
push some things. How about that to um to market to you guys? I know you love you love spending money. Who doesn't love to spend money? Um, <laughs> You know, but let me tell you, a great way that you could spend your money is by going to patreon.com slash Wednesdays Talk and signing up as a patron. Um, Tobias, you posted a, a bunch of cool stuff over there, some raw footage from the TNT area. Um, we are working on uh, all three of us will be posting our um, top Halloween movies here for the spooky season coming up. Great time for that. And um, right now, if we can get. Uh, five people in our in our uppermost tier. Um, so that is the highest um, highest tier that we have available. If we get five of them, um, we are going to be doing a monthly book giveaway. So um, that's the goal. That's your incentive to want to sign up. Why wouldn't you want to anyway? Again, I know you love to spend your money. So spend it on us. We uh, would appreciate that. <laughs> it's true. We really would appreciate that. Um, you know, podcasts are uh laborious at at times and uh the equipment costs money and and time is valuable and of course we we do this for for love of the game but anything you would be able or willing to do to support our efforts here and on wednesdays we talk weird is always much appreciated yeah absolutely and you know it's not just the podcast i mean we're both independent researchers and investigators and let me tell you guys that shit is very expensive um that's true it costs money to get to the Mothman Festival. I mean, even just that, right? It's fun, but like, it it, it costs you a pretty penny to go spend the weekend. There. Oh yeah, no, um, like my entire book advance has been blown on research, yeah. and probably then some. So yeah. it's you know th- this research is is very expensive, and we're we're not the type to ask you to pay for it ahead of time, you know, because guess what? We're gonna do it anyway. Whether you give us your money or not, we're gonna do it anyway. Let's be honest. Um, but it would, God, it'd be nice if, uh, you know, <laughs> if it could pay for itself. <laughs> yeah, for real. So anyway, I'm done shilling. Um, go ahead, Tobias, with your news. That was some quality shilling, though, honestly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I do have one news. Now, I, I have been, you know, obviously pretty busy, but uh, I didn't manage to get an, an article out uh, the week of Mothman. And so I wanted to make sure. I, I get one out or got one out the week of um, Van Meter. And so I ended up doing another entry into good old Reports from the Void. So again, for anybody who's not familiar with that series, Reports from the Void is a repository to share those stories for which we do not have enough information to make a full report. This is usually because of little or no communication from the witness following their initial submission. Singular 40 in society and on Wednesdays We Talk Weird, will always provide as much information as possible regarding any correspondence during our attempts to speak with those involved. I cannot stress this last part enough. This series is meant only to present you with the full breadth of the information sent to us and makes no judgments towards the veracity of any stories shared within it. So, you know, the thing about this is, a lot of these reports, I think, sound credible. And the real shame of it is, I think that if I was able to follow up with most of these witnesses, like actually really interview them and be able to, to dig into a lot of these details, I think they would turn into some some very interesting reports. And uh, and this one is, is kind of one of those. So this is from uh, an email originally received March 3rd, 2024, uh, that was entitled Urgent. Urgent is in all caps here, of course. Experience in Lebanon Hills 3224. So this person had their weird experience on March 2nd, 2024, reached out to us the next day to tell us about it. Now, the email itself is very long. So, of course, for the for the uh the full email, if you want to read it. Just go to singularfortian.com. You can find it in the the news section. But I'm going to summarize it here. So this came from a a woman who wanted to talk about an experience she had with her 14-year-old daughter. So they were out walking in the woods with their dog when they experienced some real weird stuff. Um, now again, this was Lebanon Hills. She didn't specify 
but I'm going to guess that, well, based on context, I'm going to assume rather that this is Lebanon Hills Regional Park, uh, which is just south of uh, Minneapolis. It's kind of, well, it's it's in the, like the Minneapolis, St. Paul metropolitan area. Uh, it's kind of on the southern border border of uh, of Egan, uh, I, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I always get Minnesota names wrong, and then people get mad at me. So sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your weird names. Anyway, uh, so she's out in the woods with her daughter, and the first thing that happens is they come across some weird look looking burnt logs that look like they had been deliberately placed in a circle with a giant one in the middle. And their assumption then after seeing them was that they had been used for some ritual and uh, and potentially burned over and over again. Now, they don't get into a lot of detail about any sort of speculations on, as to what kind of ritual or anything, but we can assume nefarious. I don't know. People don't get weirded out by, you know, good rituals usually, right? I, anyway. I mean, um, I don't know about that, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I don't know where her biases lie. That's true. Like she <laughs> she could just hate everything. Um, anyway, so after that, they they see these logs and uh, and assume they're for being burnt for some and then placed deliberately for some ritual purpose, which may or may not be nefarious based exclusively on this witness's bias that we do not know. Uh, okay. So after that, then they find these man-made looking huts in some of the area that were made of brush, sticks, logs, and vines. And in every one of these, again, ritualistic looking circles, there was green grass growing underneath them and everything else was nothing but dead from the winter and pine needles outside of it, she said. So... At this point, they're pretty creeped out. And the, she described the air as feeling very heavy, like there was a weird energy to it. And they started to feel like they were being watched. But they didn't hear anything except for the wind. So they walk a little bit further and decided to turn around since it was almost five and, and dusk was approaching. They didn't want to be caught out after dark, especially considering they were getting creeped out having found all this weird stuff. So they turn around to go back, and that's when the dog starts to act strangely. Now, the dog refuses to go back. He digs his paws in and pulled back his tail straight down, not wanting to continue back the way they had come. And so she says that she has recorded this uh, on video, which, of course, again, I wasn't able to see, unfortunately. Um, but she stressed that he's not the type of dog to ever do this kind of thing. You know, he's normally a very obedient dog, uh, doesn't necessarily spook easily. So eventually she's able to uh, coerce him and they were able to go back the way that they came. And as they're walking back, they started hearing what sounded like logs banging against each other across this pond. And so they stop and sort of look around to see if they can find what's what's making this noise, and, and they can't. And all of a sudden, as that's happening, they felt a really icy, cold chill surround them. Like the air suddenly got very cold. And so she decides to joke with her daughter and say, well, you know, oh, it's Bigfoot. We better start running because what do you do? You don't want to freak your kid out any more than they already are. So she's trying to, to lighten the <laughs> mood here. And uh, and they start walking uh, faster, and that's when they hear this weird howling scream. Uh, so they yeah they heard the the log banging a few more times the closer they got back to the main path, and uh, and that howling scream and it it freaked them out. Well, at least that's that's what she said. She said it freaked us out because it sounded like what a Bigfoot would sound like or just some type of creature. So at this point, they determined that whatever they heard definitely didn't sound human, and it didn't sound like any animal they were able to identify. Uh, her daughter, for what it's worth at the time, felt very dizzy all of a sudden, 
And again, like the whole time, they feel like they're uh, being watched. So she didn't know anything about the park. Uh, she's relatively new to the area, she said. Uh, so she went to Google, found us, basically, and uh, and decided to reach out. And so, you know, as always happens with these reports from the void, I reached out. I didn't get any response, unfortunately, because I really do think this is a very interesting account. And I would have loved to speak with this witness and uh, and, and get more, more details um, because it reads as an authentic experience, at least in so far as uh, something happened to these people that, that they can't explain. And that's, that's all it takes for me to be interested, frankly, you know? Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. What's, what's interesting about the area though, is of course I looked into Lebanon Hills a little bit. So assuming they're talking about Lebanon Hills regional park there in the, uh, the Minneapolis metropolitan area, um, it's a very developed area. There aren't a lot of, uh, uh, Bigfoot sightings there. So the park itself is in Dakota County. If you go to the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization website, you know, they've got 79 sightings that they've collected from Minnesota. None of them are from Dakota County. The nearest sightings reported to the BFRO uh, are from a man who said he saw a large bipedal creature while bow hunting in Washington County, Minnesota in 1972. So that was a long time ago. And a man who said he drove past a seven to eight foot tall hairy humanoid in uh, St. Croix County, Wisconsin in 1995. And so these are a couple of adjacent counties to uh, Dakota. um, And they are in more, you know, rural areas than, than, uh, Lebanon Hills. So, but, uh, you know, eerie unexplained howls are not unheard of. This has been a thing in, in cryptozoology for some time now. You know, we've covered several at the Singular 40 in society. Um, they seemed like they were having a moment in like 2019 and, and 2020, because that's when most of the, uh, the eerie howls that I've reported on come from. But yeah, there are, you know, several compelling examples of people recording them even. So who knows? Could be something to it. But uh, anyway, I've been talking for a long time. So uh, thoughts? (laughs) Um, You know, I just, it's, I mean, do you, do you personally think that there's some tie between this strange ritual setup and this creature? I mean, I guess that's what the implication is here, right? I do don't know. Uh, that's another thing that I would have loved to ask this witness. Uh, again, like, you know, I, I was joking before, but, you know, I, yeah, I don't know really what she believed uh, about the, the ritual setup that, that she had seen. You know, I, I don't know what her opinions on the occult are. I don't know what her opinions on, you know, magic or witchcraft or any of that stuff is. So, you know, on, on the one hand, yeah, you might have a very, say, conservative Christian person who would look at any form of occultism, even something that we might see as relatively benign, uh, like contacting some kind of uh, nature spirit or or performing some kind of blessing or something and 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 interpret that as as being demonic or evil, right? Or you could have somebody who is more sort of, of new age or, or open-minded or something who would, who would recognize something like that. Um, and, uh, and to them, that would be no big deal or, or it would be seen as very positive. But without speaking to the witness, we just have no idea. Uh, and so she didn't really mention specifically any causal connection uh, so much as uh, I think that it was just a weird thing that happened that day. And, and so she, she included it, but who knows? I mean, she might think there's a connection. I couldn't tell you. No. Um, I mean, I I, I think obviously she thinks there's a connection, um, you know, because she, she mentioned it. Right. Um, Uh, yeah, maybe, you know, I, I, maybe that's not obvious. I don't know. Some people do think that, you know, some people, um, think that, you know, this stuff is tied to, uh, demons and, um, while I disagree with them. Yeah. You know, uh, so you're saying Bigfoot isn't a demon? Well, 
I've never met one, right? So I, I can't say that for sure. <laughs> right. Uh, but now when I meet Bigfoot, I have two questions for him. Uh, one, what's your dick look like? Two, okay. are you a demon? Those are very personal questions. <laughs> um, honestly, just, Big, Bigfoot's just like, wow, rude and mean. <laughs> what is wrong with you, lady? Just storms off. Um, but... <laughs> But yeah, you know, I, I I don't think it ha- has to be demonic either. You know, uh, some people have talked about uh, Bigfoot as you know, sort of nature spirit or or uh, manifestation, sort of along those lines, right? Or even Guardians. even yeah. even if it's like the uh, the somehow the manifestation of the human archetype of the wild man or something like that doesn't mean it's necessarily evil. It's not demonic per se. Um, you know, so it, it doesn't have to be interpreted that way. But again, like there is a sect of of humanity that would. So I get it. Well, let me ask you, Tobias. Um, how many times have you been on an investigation somewhere, and you've been talking to the town folk, and they have mentioned the satanic cults in the area that you're going to investigate? <laughs> that has been a popular urban legend since <laughs> I was a kid. Like every town Everywhere. is a satanic cult. Yeah. And they're yeah. always mutilating cattle or stealing dogs or cats or something. And yeah. nobody ever seems to have a good record of that literally happening. But everybody has a story about how they're sure it does happen. <laughs> yeah. it, it is. No, it is everywhere. Um, and uh, let me tell you, I'm so I'm really disappointed. I haven't come across a satanic cult yet. Um you guys yeah. know personally where i can find one i'm happy to go look for him uh but you know to this day we did uh find a dead cat once but uh. which was um devastating in and of itself but you know cats um are very ballsy <laughs> so, well they get out and there's all kinds of dangerous stuff for cats which is why you shouldn't let your cats outside by the way yeah. everybody so yeah. stop doing that Ugh. But yeah, yeah, no, that's that's sad. But yeah, there's tons of stuff that can that'll kill a cat. You know, anything from accidents to disease to predators. You know, that's yeah, why you age, shouldn't let them outside. Knows, right? Who knows why that cat? It wasn't mutilated or anything. It was just dead. Um, yeah. But you know, you get a group of teenagers, and they've grown up with these stories of satanic cults. You know, practicing animal sacrifice, and then they go out in the woods and they see a dead cat. You know, they want to believe that it was a satanic cult that did it. Um, anyway, I'm not saying yeah. that that's what she's saying here, but <laughs> oh, sure, no, I get it. Well, um, I mean, and, and this, you're right. This is sad. Like we never ever find the the satanic cult. So now we've got no satanic cults. Right. We've got no vampires in Ohio. No. And that's a huge bummer. Yeah. Oh yeah. This I is uh, still haven't found worst. one. I've looked. You know, the hurricane came through and didn't wash up any. Um, you know, it's, it's devastating that. <laughs> I think I'll stop using that word. I've used it a lot today. Right, a lot of devastation going on lately. There's been um, a lot of devastation going on lately. That's just accurate. I'll just say uh, instead of let's say that it's disappointing. That there, we go. that's is. a better word. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't it doesn't happen anyway. I just bring that up because it is kind of a tropey thing, you know, mm. in this community. Um, or at least it can be, you know, to have. Oh yeah, just in general, it is ritual magic. Um, as far as like the sighting itself, or you know. I shouldn't say sighting, but the encounter. experience, sure, experience. There we go. Um, you know, for whatever this this may be, um, who knows? You know, I'm not familiar with the wildlife in that area. Uh, do you guys have cougars in that area? Yes, there. Uh, there are mountain lions. I think it would be uh, unusual, maybe, for one to be in that area, considering how urban it is, but not impossible. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that there are. And this has always been the argument for those those eerie howls. Like there are animals that can make weird noises. You know, anything yeah. from like elk to foxes to you know mountain lions or cougars, whatever you want to call them. I feel weird about using the word cougar now because it's been <laughs> co opted for like you know sexy older ladies. And um, so now I, I'm a married man. I can't be saying words like cougar. <laughs> I just I just say mountain lion. The cougars um, are out in the woods like, hey, handsome. <laughs> right? I think that one just winked at me. Just hold up my like hold up my hand with my wedding ring on it. Sorry, ladies. 
<laughs> it's never stopped me before. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous territory. Um, Gross. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, okay, so anyway. But uh, okay, let me just say this. I, I, we're we're not here to sex shame cougars, you know. Go oh, no, go get yeah. it, ladies. Like right. that's great. Seriously. We're all rooting for you. It's just uh, I'm married, and now I feel weird about it. Anyway, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So there, like, there are animals like mountain lions, foxes, like elk, a lot of different stuff. I think even deer can make some weird some oh, weird yeah. noises if if you're not prepared. Uh, so who knows, honestly. Listen to animal noises. Go on YouTube. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, it is you fun. know, I'll tell you, I have been listening to animal noises for a long time because I, what do you want me to say, guys? I'm fucking weird. You know, I mean, <laughs> you get that by now. Um, it's one of my hobbies, right? Um, but just like maybe a year ago, I think it was Tobias. Wall, after you started the show, I encountered a squirrel outside, and um, mm-hmm. you know, it's a noise I've heard a million times, but I never connected it to squirrel ever. Uh, mostly because like when you're into this type of study a lot of the noises that you really familiarize yourself with are like big animals um but man there was a pissed off squirrel <laughs> tree outside of my apartment and it was yelling at me it was yelling at everybody that came, yeah. <laughs> came by and uh, i was like what the fuck that's what a squirrel sounds like you know it, it's it's really surprising <laughs> it is <laughs> you know but it, for some people oh we're in trouble. We got in trouble. It's it's time. It's time to move on. I guess um, that's okay. Yes, we've we've spent all of our time on news, and now we have to get to the actual meat and potatoes. Yeah, the subject of today's show. Yep, that's that was our uh, that was our uh, our our stopping bell. Um, so okay, that's fine. Uh, you know. That's okay. I think we need to get into it anyway. Um, kind of rude that you would talk about food, considering the topic, um, meat and potatoes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you did it, so. <laughs> I did. I can't undo it. You know, I, I don't, I'm not going to go into a full trigger warning disclaimer, but here's your trigger warning disclaimer. It's going to get real gross, you guys. So if you're not into that type of thing. Uh, it, it's in the title of this episode, uh, which we're calling a drug induced cannibalism. Um, so if for whatever reason you thought that this was family friendly, I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, but it's, it's not. And, uh, if you're sensitive to that type of thing, uh, go listen to something else this week, you know, and come back next week. Um, thanks for hanging out with us for the news of the weekend. So yes, with that being said, Tobias, have you ever done any drugs? Um, are you a cop? You have um, to tell me if you're a cop. That's true. I do. Um, no, I'm not. Uh, okay. Then maybe. <laughs> you don't have to get into it, and that's okay. I understand if you don't want to. Um, but I've done a lot of drugs in my life, and um, I don't do a lot of drugs now, uh, but you know, I used to back in the day. Sure. And um, I've done all kinds of stuff. Um, I, you know, I, but, but I don't think I've ever really done hard drugs personally um i guess that depends on what you consider hard drugs i've never had i've never been an addict and i know that's something an addict would say but i stopped pretty quickly and i haven't done them ever since um but you know when you do drugs and, and you're doing them to party right you're in that party mindset um it gets real interesting what you're willing to do in order to get high you know and and again that does definitely sound like something an addict would say but it's not really that so much um so Back in my day, um, a little bit before, one of the main topics we're going to talk about is kind of bath salts. I never did bath salts, um, but I have done gas station drugs. I guess I'll ask that. Have you ever done gas station drugs? No, that is a weird subset of yeah. of drugs, though, isn't it? Like, I, I, I will say this. I have been around lots of drugs. Uh, I definitely do not do drugs for anybody who, for, for anybody who is wondering or cares about that. I, you know, I, I don't even drink alcohol. Week. They're really. like, does What's Tobias Willen do drugs? Every week I get a message about it. And well, I'm like, you can tell him I don't. So I'm like, I don't think he does. That's just all him. Yeah. No, I'm just like this. I can't <laughs> even help it. So, which is mean, you know, guys, you don't have to make fun of me. <laughs> Nobody's anyway. Ever Right. Actually, but, they send uh, me a bunch of nerd shit. They'll send me like D and D stuff, and they'll be like, "Tobias would love this." I would. I love those guys. I'm like, "Well, tell him." They should just tell me. Yeah, 
Is it cool? Because I want to see it, you know? <laughs> Usually, yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, yeah. Anyway. If you've got any cool nerd shit, send it over. Send it my way. That's that's what I'm looking for. No, I, I have been a lot, like, I have been around a lot of, of drugs in my day. And I know that sounds weird, but, you know, I'm, I, I feel like there was a time in the 90s and the early 2000s and stuff where that stuff was just around and you'd be at parties and it would just be around you know, um, and, uh, you know, I probably felt a certain kind of way about it, but you know, it just, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, no, I feel like I missed the boat on gas station drugs. Cause I was, I think I was too old by the time those were a thing for anybody <laughs> to be taking them and like using them anywhere where I would see like in, anywhere where I would be exposed to that. So I think that. um, well, I mean, I know these gas station drugs kind of ebb and flow. Like there's always something new and some of them will kind of go back into rotation. So like when I was a teenager, um, gas station drugs would be like whippets, right? Oh, okay. If we're counting whippets and yeah, I've seen a ton of people do whippets. You know what I mean? It's like stuff that you get, uh, ro- Robitussin, right? Robo tripping. Like that's over the counter. Yeah. You can buy, okay. it's not really just gas station, but like, you know. Sure. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. You know, things that you can get your hands, you can get pretty drunk off a of hand sanitizer and uh, mouthwash, I guess. Gross. I, I don't recommend any of these drugs to people. Um, and uh, there's a good reason for it. And we'll kind of, <laughs> well, well, maybe we'll talk about it a little bit. But, um, you know, during my time, have I ever done gas station drugs? Um, the one thing was really popular. I don't remember what it was. K2, though. I smoked K2. That was terrible. <laughs> everybody's like it's just pot and and it doesn't show up on drug tests and i'm like really and then you fucking take one hit off of it and you're on the moon and not in a good way it's the scary it's the dark side of the moon <laughs> oh no <laughs> so you, you just end up on hell moon it was hell on hell moon yes <laughs> that would be it that would that would make a great horror movie i'd watch the shit out of something called hell moon right <laughs> somebody somebody make this hell moon um anyway and you have to get there by smoking k2 um yeah so you know i've 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 done that um and i didn't have a good time and just kind of decided i was never going to do it again i don't know what explicitly made me not go for bath salts because that was also like that time period like that same time um when they we had k2 we also had the bath salts now they're called bath salts because they are advertised as bath salts at the gas stations. They're little, these, these little crystals, right? You know what bath salts are. You put them in your bath and it's sure. nice and relaxing. Um, yeah, but yeah, pour yourself a glass bad. of wine, light some candles. Yeah, right. And yeah, put on some light music or maybe your favorite podcast on Wednesdays yeah. We Talk Weird. Grab a book. Absolutely. Yeah, right. And just kick back bath salts. They're nice and relaxing. Well, this wasn't that. Um, this was something to get you high. And, right. Uh, this was bath salts that make your brain crazy. Yes. Um, and for whatever reason, during like the height of, of the bath salts craze, um, you know, and I think it's also because of the growth of social media, um, we had cannibals happen too. And <laughs> not just cannibals, it, it would be pretty simple for you to get on social media and see a video of somebody acting absolutely fucking unhinged in the wild, right? Homeless people or whatever. I mean, you would see these videos of people that are just acting out of their mind and everybody was just like, oh, they're high on basalts. Like, that's what's happening here. Yeah. And this kind of really boomed in popularity um, with a, a very particular case, um, which had a lot of people really freaked out, and it's kind of understandable why. So let's kind of get into that a little bit. So on May 26, 2012, a gentleman by the name of Rudy Eugene drove to Miami Beach to attend the Urban Beach Week event that was there. Um, Rudy was there for about 30 minutes uh, before he started walking along the MacArthur Causeway, which is a highway, essentially, um, and stripping himself along the way as he continues to make his trek, a uh, three-mile trek, I mind you, all the way down to where he was getting to go. Well, eventually he gets where he's getting to go, and this is within the presence of a homeless man by the name of Ronald Popo. Now, 
Ronald and Rudy, which would make a great, like, that would be a great buddy sitcom if one didn't eat the other guy's face off, but. (laughs) (laughs) I mean. Wouldn't you watch Ronald and Rudy, you know? Yeah, dare to dream. Yeah, if that was a world we lived in, but we live in this one instead. So anyway, um, they did they didn't know each other but they did know each other so like a lot of the headlines at the time when this event happened was like you know they was unrelated to each other they'd know one another. Right. i guess rudy had put in some hours at the local soup kitchen and and ronald had you know attended the soup kitchen and maybe they had known each other that way i don't think they were ever personal with one another um at least that's what ronald would eventually say so rudy encounters ronald and was initially very friendly with him until all of a sudden he wasn't uh rudy started accusing ronald of stealing his bible and you can't do that to a man so you don't steal a man's bible you know you don't touch his bible even though this guy was stark fucking naked in the middle of miami beach (laughs) oh yeah Uh, there's like security footage that just shows him ditching his bible on his own so yeah right I mean, so, you know, but he starts freaking out at Ronald, accusing him of stealing his Bible and decided to uh, start beating the shit out of him relentlessly and, uh, you know, strangling him and beating him. Ronald said that um, he was doing like wrestling moves and like wrestling chokeholds and stuff on him, which is actually like super fucking dangerous. Don't I know people used to practice them as kids, but like people have died from doing that. Uh, Don't do that. Oh, yeah. We totally used to do that, like, uh, where you'd play that game where you'd stand up against a wall and somebody would basically just cut off blood flow until you passed out. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> which is the dumbest game I can think of in hindsight. But, yeah, it was totally a game that we would play. It was just a normal game. So yeah, That's why you didn't take drugs. You didn't need them. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I'm not. I'm neither confirming nor denying any interactions I've had with drugs. I'm just not going to get into it on this podcast. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, you, you, you just don't do that to people. There, there's a reason it's called professional wrestling, right? They, they practice this stuff. Anyway, so he is relentlessly attacking Ronald. Um, he also takes his pants off. He takes Ronald's pants off. Like, his pants are already gone. Yeah. Um, he, he starts taking off Ronald's pants. I don't know what the intention was there, if there was an intention. Was a, yeah, like, that was a weird move, because he's got him unconscious, and then he takes his pants off, and you're thinking, okay, well, this is going to turn into a sexual assault or something. Right. Um, and you the deliverance banjo, you're like, uh-oh. Well, something. But, well, you know, and this is one of those rare cases where you're like, you know what? That probably would have been better. Oof. I know, right? It's really, it is terrible. Um. So he takes his pants off and then starts chomping at his face. So this is all happening in broad daylight. Um, It it is being recorded. So you, I mean, there is footage of kind of, eh, kind of what's happening. Um, They're kind of half covered up a little bit. Um, But, you know, people are concerned about what the fuck is going on. There's there's two men. One's completely naked. One's got his pants off. One's eating the guy's face off. Uh, so, of course, they call the police. That's the right move. Um, so while Rudy is, you know, chomping at the face and gouging out the eyes and just going to town on this guy's face, uh, the police show up and, you know, they're like, hey, knock it off over there. <laughs> Sounds- <laughs> Well, that was a little more serious than that. Like Officer yeah. Jose Ramirez arrives, and uh, I mean he is shocked at what he's seeing. I course, I think they yeah. prepare you for a lot when you're a police officer, yeah. but nothing can prepare you for something like this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I mean of course immediately he he warns Eugene to stop eating that guy's face. You know. Uh. Yeah, but he's he like, doesn't. I'm, I'm going to shoot he, you if you don't, you know, and I, I just, okay. Uh, so uh, second disclaimer here, guys, I'm going to use a lot of humor because this shit is so dark. You, you have yeah, to. Of course. Um, it's you know, not, we recognize how serious this is. Right. It's not to be insensitive, you know, to the topics. It's just that, you know, you got to cope, right? So yeah. anyway, um, so the officer does warn Rudy Eugene to, you know, stop what he's doing. I'm going to shoot you if you don't. Um, Rudy growls at the police officer 
um, and continues his assault on uh, on Ronald Popo until eventually they did shoot. They shot him. They shot him one time, and he it, it didn't stop him. Yeah, he was ravenous. He just kept eating the guy's face, so then he had to shoot him four more times until he died. Yeah, and so they had to shoot him to death um, in order to to get him off. Now, of course, Ronald was um, rushed to you know local area hospital. Um, he had seventy five to eighty percent of his face eaten off. That mm. is awful. Okay, you know how I feel about chimp attacks. <laughs> that's I, yeah. I was gonna I was gonna mention it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically what this is. Like it is. This dude chimp attacked another human being. Yeah. And just like bit his face off. Like oh god, like he's permanently blind now. Of course he's disfigured. You can't have your face bit off and just bounce back from that. Um just horrific horrific circumstances for this poor man who did literally nothing wrong. I I feel like his his only, you know, quote unquote crime here was being an unhoused person. And so he was an available victim for this guy. Right. You know, he did did nothing to like put himself in this position. He wasn't willingly interacting with this man. Like he was just minded his business and dude came up to him stark naked, super crazy looking to eat somebody's face. Yeah. The only saving grace is I believe Ronald Papa was unconscious during the the physical assault on his face he was yeah i mean that's i think the only reason that it it was able to happen yeah right he was because he got choked out to unconsciousness first you know so um if there's any silver lining here thank god for that you know (laughs) yeah right you know It, it did end up eventually ending his homelessness and stuff um you know his family stepped up and started taking care of him but it's really shitty that it had to come to that to get help from your own family, but okay. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, what, what kind of bullshit dystopia do we live in where, where somebody has to have their face fucking eaten before society gives a shit about what's happening to them. Right. Yeah. Like that is beyond fucked. Yeah. It, no, it really is. Um, but you know, Ronald did survive the attack, you know, um, he did. Well, he's a little worse for the wear, but he, you know, he's alive. And, um, uh, Rudy is not. Uh, so before we get to the evidence that was found there, um, the news is going absolutely crazy with this story. Um, they are talking about a zombie in Miami. Um, they are talking about bath salts being the cause. Bath salts create zombies and did in this case. And they're super dangerous and we need to get them off the market immediately. Which- What's interesting about that is... This is okay. Society's reaction to this situation had been building up in terms of uh, 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 manufactured panic about bath salts for like a year, yeah. you know, because there were a couple of big articles. Like, there was a New York Times article that came out in 2011 about bath salts, and it described them as, you know, this sort of like amphetamine like substance that can also cause hallucinations and agitation and all this stuff. And, you know, there was a, there was um, an article in time in 2011. So like these huge national publications are beginning this, this sort of like moral panic about bath salts and how dangerous they are. And then this shit happens and they're like linked immediately and people are like, oh, yep, see, I told you, bath salts, you yep. know, like I told you they were dangerous. I told you they they make people do crazy shit. Well, and that's why I mentioned like the, you know, getting on social media and finding any any type of video of an unhinged individual being called bath salts. I mean, it was just kind of an easy excuse for everything. Right. Um, so it, it was definitely the perfect cocktail for this to explode. It's certainly not the only instance that we're going to talk about today. Um, and it's not the only instance, period. But man, this caught on like wildfire and everybody was talking about it. I remember when this happened and everybody was talking about it. Um. You know, I think it would have been cooler had we just left it at zombie, right? And um, yeah. maybe Ronald now would be a zombie. I guess that's kind of insensitive to say about a victim at, at the time. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, that, I, that was going around, though. Like, certainly, <laughs> I think the people I knew were talking more about sort of Zombies. zombie apocalypse. And, yeah. 
yeah, what if this is the beginning of the outbreak? Like, which, yes, obviously, in hindsight, is extremely insensitive, considering that there is this surviving victim who mm-hmm. is permanently disfigured as a result of this vicious attack. But yeah, I mean, if you're going to cover it, you got to cover it. And absolutely, that kind of talk was was going around, and it was very popular on social media. So. Yeah. Well, you know, the, just the different aspects of it, right? The, the the growling at the police officers and obviously the eating the man's face and the, um, you know, one shot didn't deter him. I mean, all of those things were just it was just it, it made for great media at the time. At least that's oh, what yeah. the media outlets thought. And so they spread it around and everybody's like, oh, it's bath salts. You, what you didn't hear. Here's what you did not hear about. You didn't hear the toxicology report of Rudy Eugene. I guarantee you that unless you went out of your way to look for it, uh, that news did not spread so quickly because the media had their story and that's what it was, right? Oh, it's bath salts. That's what happened. And we're done. Um, but that wasn't the end of it. Um, so when the toxicology report and the autopsy came back um, on Rudy Eugene, um, they had only found trace amounts of marijuana in his toxicology. They did also find for undigested let me say that again four undigested unidentified pills the undigested part is the very important part here well let me say bath salts are not pills that doesn't mean that you can't find strange and unusual drugs in pill form there is always something out there um but whatever this was whatever happened it I mean, it's about 98% unlikely that whatever Rudy Eugene experienced to make him act the way he did was not the cause of those pills because they were, guess what, undigested. But what if he had taken other pills that were digested and these were just the ones that had not digested yet? He definitely could have taken other pills that were undigested, um, but whatever it was, they, they it didn't show up on a toxicology report. And this kind of there was like a fight between like the medical examiner and the police doing the investigation because the police were like, OK, well, then obviously he had some unidentified drug in his body, right. um, you know, to have caused this. And the medical examiner was like, yeah, but like we know our shit. Like we're not stupid. I mean. <laughs> we know what we're doing we know to test for things like that um and we didn't find it and so you know it's kind of up in the air exactly what might have caused rudy eugene to to act this way um i'm not going to go into his criminal history or anything like that it really doesn't matter Um, it's not relevant to the face eating no it's not uh, you know none of it he's never done anything like this before (laughs) no yeah right (laughs) well he did have a history of eating faces do you think that's relevant yeah, right. He left his house that day and was like, hmm, I sure would like to eat a man's face today. <laughs> I've eaten That's like that. 10 faces, but I could eat another face. <laughs> I, could, yeah, I could go for another. <laughs> it's time. You know, um, yeah, he was pregnant. He was craving face. You know, I, just whatever ridiculous thing you want to insert there. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, this wasn't this was very unusual behavior. Um, but it's it's pretty good chances that it wasn't bath salts because they could have tested for that and they did and it didn't show up whatever it was so you know yeah so that basically you know i don't have anything else to say about the miami cannibal case um so what i'm hearing is that there is a conspiracy to cover up that this was bath salts yes yes (laughs) okay and it's because the U.S. government um, thinks that it would be easier, both sides think that it would be easier to take bath salts and put it in rotation and turn people into zombies. That way they're more compliant when they round everybody up and put them in FEMA camps. Bam. Done. We nailed it. (laughs) You heard it here first, patriots. You know, it's coming, right? We all know it's coming. (laughs) It's only been like 50 years since we've been saying that, but it's still coming. <laughs> yes. Now I'd like to sell you some colloidal silver. But again, there are other cases where this, where drug induced cannibalism has been the talk of the town. And this one is interesting and it's going to kind of take you on a little bit of a roller coaster here. So 
um, August 15th, 2016, four years after the Miami um, face eating happened, uh, another drug is going around, another gas station drug. It's called Flocka, which is a really stupid name for a drug. <laughs> that is a stupid name. Have you ever heard of it? Not really. I mean, again, I'm not up on my gas station drugs. <laughs> Get good, Tobias. <laughs> I know. Go to your local gas station. You know which one I'm talking about. Go to that one. We only have one, but it's got huge signs outside advertising that they sell wine, spirits, and vapes. Oh. So if there are legal gas station drugs, they probably have it. I just go in every six months, be like, hey, what's the new right? drug? You know, <laughs> those are. get some flaca. Right, let me get some flaca. You know, I don't really know what flaca is necessarily. I just know it's another gas station drug. Again, I'm it's my supposed interest. to be the same as bath or close to bath salt. A, a lot of these drugs are very similar to each other, you know, and uh, it just depends on what the flavor is. You know, I'll tell you right now, um, before I get into the next one, the, the current like trendy drug to talk about and blame things on, which is all these drugs are fucking terrible for you. Do real drugs like an adult. <laughs> Or, I mean, hear me out. Uh, just don't don't do any drugs. You probably I know. I'm just saying. Shouldn't really. Well, it just depends. You know, but that's a slippery slope. Whatever you want, but like, you don't have to do drugs. Some drugs are like okay to do. Ibuprofen. You can do ibuprofen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not great for your stomach or your kidneys, but in small doses, you should be okay. It's, I, I take ibuprofen like two or three times a year, probably. Just as needed, right? Did you take yeah, drugs? I just cut loose. I'm like, ah, I'm pretty sore. I'm going to take some ibuprofen. As you need them. No, there's some drugs that are very, very, very safe. Marijuana is pretty much completely safe, especially buy it legally, right? Don't buy it off the streets anymore. But if you go buy it legally, it's very safe. You're going to be fine. Um, you could even do like shrooms or acid, and that stuff is pretty damn safe. As, again, as long as you know where you're getting it, like that's the problem. Like there are, listen, if you're going to do recreational drugs, there are kits that you can buy to make sure your drugs are safe and you fucking absolutely need to buy them because that's good advice. Fentanyl will fucking kill you. And I love you and I don't want you to die because if you die, you can't give me your money and listen to the show. So that's a good point. How are you going to become a top tier Patreon subscriber and possibly win a drawing for a cool paranormal book every month right. if you are six feet underground. Exactly. You know, I just, I want to hear about your cool music festivals and I'm not going to be able to hear about them if you go and you don't test your drugs, right? You, you got to test your drugs. Anyway, the whole reason, I, I, I didn't say this either. I'm going to digress a little bit. Uh, the whole reason I wanted to do this episode is because of that guy walking around with his fucking head missing. Um <laughs> We didn't talk about that. Let's talk oh, about God. that a little bit. Okay. Um, so I was on Facebook, which is a dangerous place to be. And uh, I saw a post that was like, check the comments about something. And uh, I did. Uh, never do that. And uh, unless you're me, you know, then do it. But you sh in general, you shouldn't do it. Um, and I did check the comments. And there are photos and kind of a story about this guy walking around Nashville, Tennessee with a good chunk of his head like straight up missing and what i mean by this you guys is that you can fucking see the guy's brain like and this isn't like an old injury well what i found out is that it is an old injury but it's not i mean it's it's very fresh in terms of being able to see your brain like it's not healed over um and he's just fucking walking around the city of nashville like that and um Obviously, I was very concerned for this person in general because I just find that fucking crazy that he's not in a hospital seeking medical or just at minimum, you don't have it covered. Like, my guy, your brain does not have the powers to protect from UV radiation. <laughs> like, it's not meant to see the sun. <laughs> you know? I mean, there's lots of reasons why you would not want your brain exposed. Yes. So many reasons. Like you shouldn't. And I'm just like, this guy is going to die. Like we're seeing this guy. And there's like videos of him. And he's like very literally picking his brain, like <laughs> touching it with his hands. And he's just, I mean, he's just walking around like, like, like it's normal because it for him, it is normal. And he is, um, uh, he is a, a homeless individual, right? He on the streets of Nashville, 
somehow you can help this guy fucking please do and give me some some peace of mind not a piece Mm -hmm. of his he doesn't have enough to give but um you know help him help him out right and uh yeah so you know i saw that and of course guess what people were saying basalt what oh god no yeah i mean i'm uh, the story that that i had heard was really this is some kind this is some combination of mental illness and refusal to accept medical treatment yes because yeah. he doesn't want to be in the hospital because like they won't let him smoke his cigarettes or something, which yeah. again is probably all, it all comes back to untreated mental illness. Most exactly. likely. Right. Exactly. It's not, um, you know, could he be doing drugs? Well, I mean, I guess he could be, but like, this is the theme of this is this whole episode is untreated mental illness. Um, spoiler alert. Uh, but yes, in this case is definitely, I mean, there's definitely something like that. So anyway, and we had kind of teased talking about this episode for a while, so that was the whole point. But I digress. Let's talk about what happened August 15th, uh, 2016, now that I've teased Flocka it. Flocka turned somebody into a zombie, I think. <laughs> Flocka. Is that, is that how you pronounce it? Flocka? I think Flacka would be more fun. With two Ks? Flacka? Maybe. I'm not Flack. very cool, though, and I think Flack we've established you. that. That's what that's what I got to say. That's what I say to Flocka. Flack, flock you. You <laughs> flocking flocker. <laughs> yeah, you showed that stupid word. Get out of here, word. <laughs> it's real dumb. It's a real dumb name for a drug. I wouldn't do it. It doesn't it even doesn't sound cool. cool. It doesn't. When you're like, oh, I'm going to do some shrooms. Like, that sounds cool. You're like, oh, that person's cool. They do shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're like that. And then you're like, oh, I'm going to do some flaca. And they're like, what did you just say? What is, is that a dance? I- <laughs> yes, everybody do the flaca. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, 19-year-old Florida man, another Florida man, uh, Rudy was as well, uh, Austin Haruf, Haralf, Harif, Austin, that's his name. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to guess like Haruf, but we did, we could just say Austin. We're just going to call him Austin because that's his name. Um, Austin, uh, was having dinner with his family when all of a sudden he stormed off to his mother's house. Um, now he had been kind of acting strangely at the dinner. Um, but he had kind of been acting increasingly strange and he was out to dinner, um, with his, I believe his father and I don't think his parents were together. No. So he's out to dinner with his dad. They kind of get into like an argument. He storms off. He goes to mom's house. When he gets to his mom's house, he starts exhibiting really strange behavior. And of course, his mom's like, what's bothering you, son? Mm -hmm. You know, and he he is clearly bothered. Um, But when I say really strange behavior, I mean, she reports that he was drinking cooking oil at one point. Which is weird. That's just gross. Yeah. Really gross. That's how you get diarrhea, you know. Um, but uh, that's what she said happened. And, uh, you know, she's like, listen, son, we got to do something about this. And um, she takes him back up to the restaurant with his dad. And this was uh, not a good idea because the argument, you know, just continued from there, ensued from there. And um, he storms off again, except this time instead of going back to his mom's house, um, he finds a couple just fucking trying to enjoy their day at their own garage. Uh, Mrs. John and Michelle Stevens are hanging out in their garage and Austin comes and starts physically attacking them. And of course, because it's the theme of the episode, he eats the fucking the dude's face off, the man's face off, the, you know, Mr. Uh, John Stevens. Well... The police show up and, you know, it ends up taking them. They had to tase him. They had to get a police dog on him. Um, And then eventually it took the the power of four officers on top of that to get him to stop the assault on the people. But it it was too late. Um, They, they, you know, they died. Unfortunately, they did not survive this. Interestingly, Um, here in this case, they chose not to to use firearms like they didn't use lethal force not because it wasn't warranted but because they were concerned about hitting the victim so i'm curious how the circumstances were different between the two cases that we've discussed so far whereas in one you've got one where the police officer was like yeah i'm gonna fucking shoot this guy i don't know what else to do 
Um, and but it, in this case, then they're like, I don't think so. Well, I wasn't going to talk about that, but yeah, we'll talk about that for a minute. <laughs> I mean, look, <laughs> I will say this uh, in one of the cases, like the first case, I know uh, the um, the perpetrator was uh, an African-American gentleman. Um, yep. And I'm I want to go way out on a limb. Was uh, was this second guy? Was he uh, was he a white guy? You mean Austin? <laughs> Austin? Yeah. <laughs> Austin was your quintessential white guy. Oh, interesting. Okay, interesting. it's probably unrelated. I shouldn't have brought it up. It's fine. Well, well let's think about this too, though. Uh, Ronald Popo was the homeless man, the victim. Uh huh. And then, uh, then you got. John Stevens and Michelle Stevens in their own home that they own, um, which are also very white people names. Just saying. Hmm. I think Ronald Papa was some type of um, some type of Latino something. Or it, I, he might not have been. He might have just been a very tan white guy because he was homeless in Miami. But <laughs> I think just yeah, just homeless being considered homeless right. is enough usually. You know. Just, uh, but you know, I, I, uh, I did notice that myself. So who knows hmm. what the difference is hmm. there? I couldn't tell you. Can't quite put my finger on it. Um, but uh, no, they sure did everything that they could. And you know what? It, it does stand to question. You know, the the Stevens they died from they this. Did. Whereas Ronald Papa did live. So it's like you know, you you gotta wonder if they had used more brute force, um, which. It's another thing, you know, that's another argument in and of itself, and it definitely gets political. When is brute force, when is that acceptable? Deadly force, when's that acceptable? I think when you're eating people's fucking faces off. Yes, I was just going to say, um, you know, I don't think it's a very controversial take to say that lethal force is called for when you're eating a fucking face. Yeah, um, so... Um, you know, they probably should have shot that guy, but anyway, yeah. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> but uh, I did say that it's fine. I mean, I, who's going to get mad about that? That's like, what oh, what? Done. oh, canceled. That's it. <laughs> if, if, You're I, done. If, right, if I, if I came upon anybody eating somebody's fucking face off and I had a gun on me, I'm not going to be like, Hey, cut that out. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try. I'm just going to shoot them. <laughs> Now you just wait a minute here, mister. <laughs> you better knock that off post haste. How can I help? <laughs> All right. Let's just talk this out. You know, right. You know, there's nothing we can't solve here, sir. You know, let me go. Let me, let me, let me call in the fucking canine unit first. You know, I'm just saying, you know, had they shot him, had these people survived, we don't know. Um, there's no way to know that, right? But um, it just, it is very suspicious. Anyway. Yeah. It gets crazier though. Let me tell you, it gets fucking wild. So, of course, um, this happens and the media goes, oh my god, it's another face-eating zombie and it's because of Flacco this time. It must have been that the first time. Which is it's just a form of bath salts. So it's, it's still right. bath salts. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the bath salts. It's just the drugs. The gas station drugs causing people to do this. Um, and they are freaking out. I mean, they are running with it and everybody's like, see, I told you, I told you bath salts were bad. Which, again, yeah. there's nobody's arguing that bath salts are good. Yeah, don't do them. <laughs> Nobody thinks that. Uh, they are pretty terrible. But, you know, in this case, um, you know, Austin walks away alive and um, he is not high on bath salts. Austin what? goes on to put in a verdict of, um, I'm sorry, uh, yes, uh, he goes in to plead not guilty due to reason of insanity. And he won that case. Hmm. so keep that in mind because that's going to be important when we talk about the next one but it's also important right now um you know they said that he had definitely had a devast some type of devastating mental break some type of mental condition something going on with him psychologically that caused him to do this austin's initial um explanation was that he was being chased by a demon and then he would later go on to say that it was because he like the official um reasoning behind it was because he believed he was half man and half dog 
So did like the demon do that or <laughs> did he change his story? He was a werewolf and werewolves are, according to a lot of people, demons. So, I, you know, I, that's okay. a good question. <laughs> No, okay, yeah. So, like, was he, like, drinking water out of a wolf track under the full moon, and then the devil showed up, and he became a werewolf that way? If those people were just thrown out 13 objects, they probably would have been just fine. It's true. (laughs) He clearly wasn't baptized, or never would have been a werewolf in the first place. (laughs) Never would have happened. They should have called the Warrens to do the exorcism on him. They do that. Okay, well. They do those werewolf exorcisms, I hear. <laughs> or they you did, lost me. I guess. <laughs> you, you lost me at Call the Warrens. <laughs> That's um, terrible advice. You know, but it, there was no drugs involved at all, period. At all, in this case. There just weren't. Yeah. Like, that wasn't, it wasn't like they even got the drugs wrong. There was no unidentified pills. Um, he just fucking attacked these people viciously and ate the one guy's face off and... You know, pretty. I mean, he kind of got away with it. I think uh, when you are, I think he is in like a place, right? He's in like a mental asylum, um, which normally with with crimes to that degree, you don't typically get out. But it doesn't mean that you can never get out. I don't know if he was yeah. out or not. I didn't look that. It up. would take a long ass time usually. Um, you know, and I, look, I. It's not as though I disagree fundamentally with the idea that we have the ability to plead not guilty by, by reason of, of mental defect. Um, I think that that is important and we should have it. And if that passed, whatever, like if that cleared whatever bar it needed to clear in the, the legal system for that to be the, the ultimate determination of this case, then that is what it is. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, generally speaking, people who, um, are found not guilty for that reason if it's a double homicide there it's that treatment is going to last a long time <laughs> like yeah. there it's like they don't get out in a couple of years or anything yeah. usually no you got to make fucking absolutely certain that there's no way this could ever happen again right um basically and so they, they usually don't get out um yes in america Huh. And we're going to talk about other countries and what they do. <laughs> but sure. It, That's it none is of our business. Hard, it is a very hard, um, it's a very hard verdict to obtain in America. You know, for yeah. one, when you look at people, let's talk about a cannibal, Jeffrey Dahmer, right? Like clearly that guy was fucking nuts or he wouldn't have been eating people. Yeah. I mean, it's true. You know, so what insanity looks like to the court doesn't necessarily mean that's what insanity is to like in an ethical code. Right. Just, sure. just morally. Um, because like clearly like Dahmer was, like I said, um, not right in the head at all. Well, I think what they're looking for is were you capable of recognizing right from wrong under, under the circumstances, right? you know? Yeah. And so somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer, yeah, I, we would all consider him sick. Of course he was, but he was capable of knowing that what he was doing was wrong. He knew it. Uh, it's just that his need for zombie love slaves overrode his recognition of the fact that what he was doing was was reprehensible. I shouldn't have um, laughed at that, but my God, how that's that's it's. So I mean, big. that was it. That's what he uh, wanted. Yeah. You know. Well, um, but then you have yeah. people like. You know, Richard, Richard Chase, who that guy was fucking nuts and he didn't get an insanity verdict. Um, And I, I don't I think he's he might be dead now. He might be still alive. But even in like prison, he's like convinced that like the, the government has radios in his head and they are talking to him. I mean, he was killing people and drinking their blood because he had to replace his own blood because he thought the government was draining his blood from his body remotely. <laughs> that's just crazy yeah. i mean um, i have been pretty tired lately do you think the government is <laughs> draining my blood remotely they probably are yeah i knew it fuck yeah well i mean you should probably go drink some and i yeah i'll see what the neighbors are up to i mean come to dayton we got we got professional blood drinkers here so could i be a could i be an ohio vampire <laughs> Tobias, you could be whatever you want to be. That's true. I, I'm going to, I, you know, it's important to dream big. 
I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to be an Ohio vampire. Thank you. You've inspired me today. Uh, you're welcome. So, you know, it, it it's just, it's one of those things, right? I mean, again, it, there was no drugs involved in this one. Um, just some random uh, psychosis, but it doesn't matter if it's drug induced or not really. Um, clearly the people that we're talking about today had some type of something going on with them. Sure. Um, well, when it comes and, to drugs and mental illness, it's kind of a chicken or the eggs sc- scenario anyway, yeah. because it's, it's difficult to discern in many cases, whether the mental illness is being caused by drugs or if drugs are being used to self medicate a, a yeah. mental illness. Yes. And that is, um, well, kind of the perfect segue into our, our next one. The last one I've got, um, before I want to talk about, um, kind of switch the rails up a little bit, talk about something a little different, but, um, hey, we're going to talk about Big Lurch. Tobias, you a big, uh, big Lurch fan? You know it. Yeah, like, we're talking about Lurch from the Adams family, right? Yeah, 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 that Lurch. Um, we all knew he was sick, right? I mean, I got uh, rules. Fucking weirdo. Um, Big Lurch, uh, was a rapper. And uh, it doesn't really matter now what he rapped in, or I mean, if you want to look up Big Lurch, you, you can you can look him up. Um, his actual name was Antron Singleton, and uh, Mr. Singleton, uh, one night on April 9th, two thousand and two, um, Big Lurch was attending a party where he was peer pressured. He says into doing a bunch of PCP. Um, so big, big Lurch ad- admits that, you know, he was in a party and he liked to drink. He liked to smoke some pot. He had never really done anything like PCP before. And, um, people at the party kept kind of feeding him cigarettes that were like dipped in PCP for him to, for him to smoke. And, uh, the very next day, it's super murky how it ended up this way. Um, the very next day, Big Lurch was found naked, pulling his hair out, covered in blood, and barking like a dog, walking down the city streets there um, in California. After police had discovered the body of Tynesha Isaias, e- 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 Essays. I don't remember how. To, I don't know how to say her name. <laughs> yeah, probably Tanisha is just fine. Tanisha. Um, they had found the body of, of Miss Tanisha um, in a very in a very bad way. Uh, Miss Tanisha, her whole chest was completely splayed open. Um, there was a knife sticking out of her, um, you know, her her bones there uh, in the middle. Of, I can't remember what the fucking bone is called. In the middle, it was of broken time. off in her scapula. Yes, in her scapula. There he goes in her scapula. Um, <laughs> it's, but it's broken off, like the. Yeah. He broke the fucking knife yeah, is very, how viciously he was attacking this poor woman. Yeah, very viciously. Um, she had bite marks all over her body. Numerous, I mean, numerous, inter- you know, just injuries all over the place. And then, of course, you know, police found this guy covered in blood barking like a dog. They thought, oh, this must be him. <laughs> yeah, well, if the shoe fits, right? <laughs> I know, I mean... So they take they take Mr. Singleton in. Um, they actually did a test of his stomach contents, which I find really interesting. I didn't know that was something they could do, but when they tested his stomach contents, they found human flesh that wasn't his. You can pump somebody's stomach, you know, like if they've well, had too true. much to drink, or you need to know if they ate some poor lady. Sure. <laughs> well, because it's pieces, right? I mean, usually if you pump a stomach, isn't it liquid? I guess maybe not. Only if your stomach's full of liquid. Hmm. Good point. You can make people throw up. That's you true. Know? That's true. Well, they they did. You know, they did find his stomach contents to contain human flesh. Uh, Miss Miss Poor Miss Tanisha. Um. So, Mister Singleton says that you know he, he remembers being at the party. He remembers doing a bunch of PCP and doesn't remember anything else until he woke up two weeks later in jail charged with murder. So, um, Mr. Singleton went on to try to, um, do the same plea that Austin did, right? Uh, not guilty by reason of insanity. And he was denied. So that's weird. Cause these cases seem pretty similar. Yeah, what? I think so. Yeah. If boy, I just I can't put my finger on what the difference might have been 
that would make one insanity and one not. I mean, but you know, you know when I think about it, hmm. you know, one we've got Austin, we've got Antron. Yeah. They both start with A. Yeah, no, that can't be it. They can't be discriminating yeah. against A names. Hmm. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll think of it. I don't know. It is weird. <laughs> I mean, I. We, Ah, uh, it's just so obvious. Anyway, anyway, um, so you know, he but he claims he just doesn't he doesn't remember, which is great, good for him because it sounds like it was fucking horrific. Um, yeah, you know the pieces that he ate. Who knows? It doesn't matter what he ate. He ate a human. Uh, he ate parts of a human person and uh, is now in prison for it for the rest of his life. Um, he seems to think that this was some type of. Or at least there's an air of people thinking that this is some type of weird conspiracy that took place. Like they kind of made him do PCP for him, maybe not anticipating that he would like murder somebody and try to eat them and and then or, or eat them and then be in prison. But um, maybe they did it to like fuck with him. I don't know. Um, the hip hop world is is strange, and I believe somehow Suge Knight is involved. And when Suge Knight's involved, it's just bad. <laughs> that guy's That's bad. That's true. <laughs> Suge Knight is a bad guy. I shouldn't say that, or he's gonna come for me because he comes for people, you know. So, <laughs> uh oh. Uh, okay, so I I am seeing that apparently in California, drug use cannot be used as grounds for an insanity plea. Which okay, all right, we'll take that. Okay. So, what, what if he was drugged though? I mean, I yeah, he admits that I don't he knows, know. You know, but like, I'm just saying, like, if you were, if people were giving you cigarettes, and you didn't know they had PCP on them. Like, then what? You're fucked. Oh no, yeah. I agree completely. I think that that situation is is fucked, and it should allow for that. But get better friends, I guess, is what the state says. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess they don't. Um, but they don't uh, take that into consideration. You know, this one we know absolutely had some type of drug induced psychosis to it um that caused this situation to, to play out it wasn't bath salts it was True. pcp and if you want to know what pcp is um i think steve-o's got tons of videos about you know showing him on fucked up on pcp and it's scary <laughs> yeah don't do that don't do pcp i don't know why anybody would um so um i, I didn't have any other tales to tell there are more um there's a lot I think of them. those are pretty good yeah there, there's a lot of them i mean if you guys are super interested definitely get into it um because i i wanted to have time to mention this um which kind of ties it a bit into the paranormal um wendigo psychosis have, okay have you heard of this wendigo psychosis i have yeah you have i know you have um <laughs> you sounded so surprised you're like huh have you i'm dubious very well, skeptical really. that you've heard of this you sure you don't do drugs how do you know i'm just kidding um no you just spent the weekend <laughs> with chad lewis of course you know um True. <laughs> you can't hang out with that guy and not know um no a wendigo psychosis is mm, it's recognized by psychology but it's not like it, it isn't and it isn't basically what it is we all know what the wendigo is right it's a ravenous beast of Al algonquin lore um who terrorizes the tribes in the winter time and um in most cases it's it's not a physical being it's a spiritual being that possesses people into um eating their own friends and family you know it's it's a it's a horrible thing so um kind of when when white people came along well i mean it's this the spiritual aspect of it's been there but kind of as the colonizers um came along into these tribes you know they were seeing people that were committing cannibalism and they kind of you know chalked it up to their own explanation right it's some type of temporary mental illness um that causes you to crave people and you know, Wendigo psychosis has been recognized in cases where people don't just cannibalize other people, but cannibalize themselves. So it's basically an insatiable hunger for, for human flesh. Um, you know, kind of reading about some of those cases, that, that, that man, that is probably a whole other episode for a whole different day and time. Um, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the cases are really interesting. There are there's like a case of of like a gentleman who was like eating his own stomach um, 
a patient who ate their own toes. Um, you know, you got people that do a lot of weird shit like that. And it is, yeah, yeah it is usually um, a very uh, temporary um, condition. I was going to, I was going to call out a movie. There's a movie like this where the girl starts like eating her own body parts. I can't remember what the fuck it's called. Oh my God. Anyway, it's good. Maybe if I think, think of it later, but um, you know, is that what's happening to these people? Is, is this considered Wendigo psychosis? Um, I don't know. I, I Tobias. Well, I, well, gee, you know, um, I know I didn't I'm looking at my, one. I'm looking at my doctorate in psychology on the wall there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, can, fuck, I don't know. I'm not qualified to say. Um, you know, if uh, if this is something that's characterized by eating parts of yourself, then none of these people did that. Uh, if that's not necessary, then maybe. I mean, so I guess I'll say it this way. Do you think that there is... Um, again, I know I didn't prepare you for that. I, I didn't warn you that I was going to talk about this ahead of time. <laughs> That's fine. Um, but, you know, do you think just whatever knowledge you have of the Wendigo in general, um, do you think there could be some type of supernatural or paranormal aspect to these random bouts of cannibalism? Well, I mean, that gets pretty deep into the realm of, of spirituality. I, I'm certain that there are people who believe that um, these people might have been possessed or something similar, right? You know, like some sort of, of demonic possession, especially if they didn't show any signs of mental illness or they didn't have any previous issues, then um, it's difficult to reconcile these, these acts with, um, you know, with that prior history, right? Or without a prior history of, you know, some concerning behavior. So I can see why somebody would entertain that idea. But again, for me, it's really just going, it, it's committing that cardinal sin that I, I talk about a lot. We've mentioned tons of times on the show of trying to explain one mystery with another. You know, um, it's not actually solving anything to say they were possessed by a Wendigo spirit or a demon or whatever. You know, there was a some sort of curse put on them to turn them into cannibals. Any, anything you want to say. That, that doesn't solve the mystery because those don't, necessarily exist at least we don't know that they exist we can't prove that they exist and so they don't work as explanations because they are in and of themselves mysteries yeah. they're they are unproven phenomena and so uh, i would be hesitant to use them as an explanation for for that reason yeah. um yeah i agree i mean like i said it's it it is recognized by science but it's also not i mean yes like there's clearly a psychosis that happens when you randomly decide to cannibalize whether it be yourself or others um <laughs> you know again normal people don't just do that um but especially with like these weird one-off cases right like whereas like Dahmer was calculated right he knew exactly what the fuck he was doing well he didn't because he thought he could make sex slaves by pouring acid in their brains but um yes. you know he, he that he ate them on purpose right <laughs> he knew what he was doing um these cases these people aren't really they they're not like i really want to eat somebody like i just want to know what that's like or there's a sexual thrill i mean they're definitely like in the heat of the moment like it's not planned <laughs> right um you know two out of the three of them are alive and the, the two out of three said yeah i definitely didn't plan to do that um I you would know. be curious to hear from a mental health professional on their opinion of whether or not the reason was that this is instinctual primate behavior because we see it in and, every, and in every other primate on the planet in how they yeah. attack each other. You use your teeth because if you're a primate, that is the most dangerous weapon you have if you don't have any other tools at hand. 
Yeah, and you, and you get a little snack too, you know. <laughs> sure. Well, it's only natural if you're biting the shit out of something, you're going to swallow some of it. Yeah. Yeah. Even um, if the point isn't to eat it, but rather just to do as much damage as possible, right. you're still going to inadvertently swallow some probably. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, I mean, a, a blood at least, you know. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, that's, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. I was going to make it sexual. I'm not going to do that. Uh, <laughs> we're adults here. We're professionals. Um, right. So, yeah, I I, I agree. Um, you know, I, I would definitely be curious to hear somebody who's more qualified than we are um, to have a take on that. I, I can't say that these things are supernatural. I can't say that Wendigo psychosis is supernatural. I know that term. Even though it has a supernatural connotation to it, it is not. It, it is no. very much psychological. You know, it's 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 something that is you know we can kind of study and see. They're not yeah, saying that these people are windigos. <laughs> it's just named after folklore. Yeah, exactly. That's all. Like I'm looking at uh, the abstract for an article from the National Library of Medicine right now. And yeah, they definitely don't think that Wendigo psychosis is caused by evil spirits. No. I know, spoiler alert, sorry everybody who was about to go look up this article, but no, it's <laughs> they they believe there is a, a psychological uh uh root to the or origin to this this uh psychosis, not not evil spirits. So, and, and maybe that psychological root came before the Wendigo. You know, it, it depends on what you believe, of course. Sure. Um, but you know, the Wendigo itself, the just the the, the legend of the Wendigo, um, can have some very real explanations behind it. I mean, famine when you're fucking starving to death will make you do weird things. I just read about the you know about those people in that plane crash eating each other. Um, oh, the soccer team? Yeah. 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 Um, which, you know, is neat to revisit, I guess, if you think that kind of thing is neat. I mean, <laughs> depends on who you ask. Soccer team probably feels differently, but, <laughs> you know, you and I yeah. sitting comfortably at home. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, is it, no, it's actually it was super interesting. Like the cannibalism didn't come out until like later. Like they, they it yeah. took them a while to admit to it. And no, it's well, they did what they had to do. Exactly. They, no, they did, and fucking no, nobody blames them. And if you do, you're an asshole. Fuck off. Right. Um, but the the Wendigo lore again, it typically that legend takes place in quarter climates where, you know, you kind of already have a heads up. Like if your harvest is not good that year, like you know you're fucked. Like ahead yep. of time. And you, your, your wheels are already turning. Like, what the fuck are we going to do? And guess what? You're going to have family members that die and you're starving. And you could either sit here with a dead body that's rotting away or you can eat it. Um, or just in general, you know, just being, you know, starving. Um, look at the Donner Party. You know, some people still think that that it was um, a crime rather than necessity that they were killing each other to eat each other. Well, maybe they were, but it doesn't mean it wasn't a necessity just your instincts take over when you're in those types of situations. And hopefully somebody like, like myself or Tobias or, or Nate or anybody listening to the show will have, never have to know what that's like, Right. <laughs> you know? Yes. Um, or, you know, was the Wendigo psychosis um, again, did it start there first? It, were people having mental breakdowns where they had these weird bouts of cannibalism because of something psychological that happens? I mean, you know, I, if they're doing drugs, you know, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> or if sure. they're not doing drugs, you know, apparently. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I again, I'm not qualified to 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 speak on on issues or or, or to make diagnoses, certainly, on sure. issues of mental health or any of that stuff. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's likely a root um in uh in psychology. For, for what is happening here and for the the traditional stories surrounding the the Wendigo, you know, frankly. I know that's an unpopular opinion. Sorry, internet, but you know, I'm not I I'm not a creepy pasta guy. So um yeah, when it comes to stories of the the Wendigo in the first place, I think the vast majority, if not the entirety of that legend probably has arisen out of real life incidents of of uh, mental illness, hunger induced mental Ill like mental illness, yeah. uh, starvation leading to cannibalism, you know, so on and so forth, and yeah. and um, you know we know how mythology is used to 
explain things mm-hmm. uh, erroneously or not, usually erroneously um, or, or in, incorrectly. And, um, and so it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that you see this wild behavior uh, leading to stories of evil spirits and, uh, and blaming that because it's, you know, I don't think people had the kind of detailed, nuanced uh, understanding of psychology when these stories uh, arose to uh, make those kinds of, of diagnoses anyway, right? Well, so here's where, here's where I'm going to bring it back full circle. So when we say shit like that person ate that person's face off because of bath salts, isn't that what we're doing? It, aren't we doing the same thing, right? That person ate that person's face off because he's a Wendigo. It's the same concept. You know, we we are trying to make sense of a horrific situation that we can't possibly understand or comprehend. Um, so therefore, we'll, you know, just as a collective cling onto something else and just go, oh, it makes sense. Let's just leave it alone. And uh, that's that's what we're doing when we talk about drugs being the culprit in some of these cases. Now, in some of the cases, they, they drugs can induce this type of psychosis. Um, but to then go and, and act like drugs are turning people into cannibals <laughs> or zombies or, you know, that part's just not really accurate. Um, you know, the people who who do the drugs and then end up cannibalizing people. I mean, I hate to say it, but like they got that dog in them. You know what I mean? Like it's already like, it's already there. Like not that they're, not that they're walking around being cannibals, you know, just in their head all day, but like, uh-huh. it's just the right mix for the chemicals in their brain to pop off and go, I'm going to eat somebody today. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know what the cause of the agitated state was, but I think you get anybody in an agitated enough state and they will resort to the sort of primal attack methods that, that we've seen again, like name, name another natural weapon we have that's better than our teeth. You can't, we don't have one. That's why again, chimp attacks, uh, really all primate attacks that you see, uh, involve devastating bites. They're, you know, that's just what we do. And the idea that somehow we are so separate from our our closest living relatives on this planet that we would just never fucking do that. It's just it's it's this sort of like human exceptionalism that we see all the time. Yeah. Where people forget that we're animals. Yeah. People forget that all the time. Uh and so yeah, I mean it makes perfect sense to me that if the right situation arises and someone becomes agitated enough for whatever reason, mental illness, uh, 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 some sort of drug induced state, you know, a psychotic break, whatever that they will resort to our number one primal method of attack, which is biting people. Yep. Why wouldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. You know, they're, you know, like I said, well, and we look at like, we have one case here where it wasn't drug induced. You know, so like I said, it's just a matter of your your chemistry at the end of the day. I mean, sure. it's you are capable. And and none of these were like the primary factor was to eat them. Or at least we don't think so. I mean, we can't speak for Rudy Eugene, he's dead, but um I don't know, according to Ronald, he was pissed off about his Bible, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's these read like not cannibalistic attacks so much as primal primate attacks to yeah. me yeah you know so and you know the same situation like i said in the very beginning videos of people just acting completely unhinged could could they be on drugs yeah they could be but they might not be also um and uh even if they are on drugs typically people that the type of people that do those types of drugs um, are riddled with mental health issues and um so I, I guess i forgot to mention that in the big large case it was it's just so shocking that case is really tough um but you know he he had an, a history of struggles with mental illness and uh you, and just normal everyday mental illness like everybody has you know and um yeah. usually when when people do drugs and they do harder and harder drugs it's it's because they're trying to 
you know, quiet, quiet that demon within them. And not the demon that, you know, eats people, but just in general, right? Hypothetical. They're self-medicating. Yeah. Like we, yeah. we had touched on that earlier. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and so um, I think the moral of the story is, first of all, don't do gas station drugs and test your drugs if you're going to do you're drugs. You're better than gas station drugs, you guys. Yeah, yeah. You there's are. better drugs out there. I mean, <laughs> you know, there there are. Uh, you know, fi- find a better drug. But yeah, don't use gas station drugs. Uh, I think uh, right now whippets are like making a comeback. That's all that. That's Don't do them. You know, just. Yeah. Smoke pot, right? Have a My beer advice, sometimes. Stick, but, if you can, just stick to legal drugs. As long as it's legal somewhere. You can drive down to Illinois from where I live in 20 minutes and and be doing legal weed. Yeah, right. You it's, know? It's that easy um, now. <laughs> yeah, like you absolutely can. So, but above all that, take care of your mental health. Yes, Take care of your mental health. And I know it's hard because we live in a society where they don't make it easy to do. Um, But it's so fucking important. Even if you don't self-medicate with gas station drugs, you know, it's still you're going to live longer. You're going to feel better. Right. And you're going to feel better while you live longer because it's just just take care of yourself. Yes. How wholesome after we talk about people fucking eating people. <laughs> well, I, you kind of, you have to go wholesome yeah. after that because that was fucking rough. You know, like that's yeah. horrible. But it is true. I mean, mental health is important. Uh, if you don't think anybody cares about you, you're wrong because we all have people in our lives who care about us and and want to see us do better and be better and take care of ourselves, whether we feel like that all the time or not. So you know, if you're waiting to hear somebody say they care about you, we care about you. You know, if you need help, get help. <laughs> like that Michael Jordan commercial. Stop it. Get help. <laughs> yes. And then fuck them kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, definitely. I mean, that is just at the end of the day, the moral of the story. If you don't want to be eating people, um, take care of yourself. You know, that's the best preventative action that you could take is to take care of your mental health that's really it you're not safe otherwise you're capable believe it or not <laughs> oh yeah we're all, we are all one mental break away from chimp attacking somebody that's <laughs> yep <laughs> sometimes i wake I up i'm like today's the day <laughs> yeah right Dude, just don't even mess with me not not today you're get you're getting the chompers you're getting bit <laughs> You know, so that's uh, that's a big part of it. But uh, anyway, um, with all that being said, welcome to spooky season. It's going to get weird over here, even weirder than it has been. Um, I love this time of year. I like to be scared. Um, I like obviously the strange and unusual. And this is the time of year that, that like it's acceptable to like that stuff. Um, but I also like the disturbing myself. I find it interesting. Um, so we're probably going to have, we're probably going to have a couple more, um, rough topics this month, but we're going to have some fun ones too, you know? So we'll, we'll have something for everybody to listen to. That's for sure. Um, definitely come check out again, the Patreon. I can't tell you enough. You, you want to know what movies we suggest. Let me tell you, you want to know what movies Nate suggests. If you think we're fucking weird, that guy, he's, he's strange. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. Why? You know, we're, we're looking forward to offering some more behind the scenes stuff too. I'm always happy to uh, just kind of dump the raw footage from investigations and trips like that. Um, I know just from the past that people have expressed interest in, in seeing that kind of stuff. I'm happy to share it. Um, so if, you know, if seeing sort of what's going on behind the scenes in terms of investigations is interesting to you. I'm happy to share what I'm working on. So if you want to get the inside scoop on whatever projects that we're working on, be that a book I'm writing or, uh, you know, some documentary appearance or anything like that, joining the Patreon is a great way to do it because I will absolutely just share whatever in there. Um, so you want to go to uh, Patreon.com, of course, and find on Wednesdays we talk weird. What's this 
specific one for our Patreon. Again, I'm going to look, and it is patreon.com slash Wednesdays Talk. That's the one you want. That's the cool one. That's the one that will definitely get you laid. Definitely get you laid. Guaranteed. To on top of um, <laughs> Tobias's top Halloween movies, he's gonna he's gonna write up his top tips on how to get laid. <laughs> right. Step one. Get married. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Right. Get step married. one. Yeah. Step one. Find a woman who can tolerate you. Step, step two, two. Marry her. I was gonna say pray, but. <laughs> That, maybe that's step one. That's like that's like <laughs> step one A, and then step one B is to find the woman who can tolerate you. Yeah. You know, ask ask the gods, uh, whatever it is you believe in. Um, be be generous uh, with with your kindness, and, and maybe it'll happen. Um, yeah, lots of fun stuff. I'm I'm sharing reports over there, which I don't normally do. Um, my uh, not that re- my reports are secret. It's just they've never really had a place. Patreon is the place for them. And you know what else? You know all those weird ads that you heard along the way this episode, right? You're sitting here and we're fucking talking about people eating people and then McDonald's is like, mm, come get you a big juicy burger. You don't get those. <laughs> yes. Ad free episodes, my Ad friend. Ad free episodes. And early. If I can get them early, this is a weekly show. It's hard to get them early sometimes. But if I can get them early, yes. I will. Um you know, so I, I try to get them as early to you guys as possible. Um, but yeah, ad free. You don't have to you don't have to listen to that ridiculousness. Um yes. Ad free episodes, behind the scenes investigation footage and, and reports, uh, stuff you're not going to find anywhere else. Yeah. And if we once we get to five uh, Patreon members at that top tier, which, you know, is a reasonable fifteen dollars a month, we're going to start doing a monthly book give, uh, giveaway for everybody in that tier. So, you know, if you're interested in, in potentially winning a, a free, awesome paranormal book every month, tell your friends, you know, be like, hey, you join me at this top tier. Uh, it will definitely get you laid and you might win a really kick ass paranormal book every month. Asterisk will not actually get you laid. <laughs> Full disclosure. (laughs) (laughs) Read the terms and conditions. Um, Absolutely. There's a lot of fine print. You know. Mostly about not getting laid. I mean, it might. Eh, Probably not. I I can't say it won't, but I can't say it will. But I will say it will if it means you'll sign up. It will. Yeah, it definitely will. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, Tobias, any final words on um, any of this? Uh, take care of yourself and don't eat any, like don't eat anybody's face. You know, like keep your house in order, get help. Right. Don't I eat mean, faces. If 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 you really need to, if you really need to eat some lips, it's not the ones up top. Just saying. <laughs> well, with that being said, guys, we'll see you back here next Wednesday. 